So I've seen audio files that say I don't need a subwoofer for stereo, it's only needed for home theaters. And I've also heard other audio files say a system is incomplete, it's not complete until you add a subwoofer. And I get that, each to their own, everyone has a preference, different preference, and especially if bass is not important to you, sure. But make sure you heard your system with and without a very good subwoofer before you decide bass is not important for you. Because I was on the same boat, okay, it's coming from experience. I thought in my head long time ago, yeah, I don't need a subwoofer because low, low bass is not all that important to me. And then I heard a system with a rel subwoofer and my mind changed. It became almost like a necessary thing for me. Another thing is this. Frequency range for our human hearing is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So when we are all fuzzing about hearing nuances and detail in the mid-range and high frequencies, but then somehow it's okay to hear less or nothing from something like 50 hertz, 80 hertz and below, that intrigued me. Not, not attacking anyone here. And granted, I listen without subwoofers all the time, although it's mainly for review purposes, and I would prefer one on my own listening hours. So it's just something to think about. I think it's interesting. So when I go to a restaurant and feel like having the best seafood, right? I love seafood, okay? And I don't go to the one that does seafood and all the other dishes. I go to one that specifically makes seafood and only seafood and preferably the one that has a good rating on Google, reasonable prices, and have been around for a long time. And Rel is the seafood restaurant in this analogy. They have been making subwoofers and diving into the art of making subwoofers for arguably longer than anyone in the audio industry. Heck, they have one goal, and that is to do one thing and do one thing to perfection, and that's subwoofers. Now, there are many subwoofers out there that have a lot of pure output and decent sound quality for musical applications nowadays, but well, decent is not good enough for them. They are striving for much more than that. To them, it's not only about the bass, but also about what happens at the critical crossover point between your speakers and your subwoofers. And they are confident, and they're very confident in their art of subwoofers. They offer free shipping, 60-day home trial, and free return, and three years of warranty. That's insane amount of confidence if you ask me. Hey, it's amazing. The subtle games that you are playing. And you don't even know I exist. So that's to say, today we are taking a look at specifically the RHEL T5i subwoofers. This is the entry-level RHEL subwoofer priced at $549 each, and it is suited for small to medium-sized rooms. Now, despite this being an entry-level subwoofer, there is nothing, absolutely nothing entry-level about it. Its build and sound qualities is befitting of the RHEL's name. This is a sealed subwoofer with a down-firing driver. The 8-inch driver that you see here is a driver that RHEL took a very long time to develop because they wanted to get it right. And RHEL did everything they can to keep the driver very rigid but keep the weight down to produce a very light but a very fast uh, driver. The driver is untreated paper with an aircraft grade aluminum inverted dust cap and the reason why they left the paper untreated is because any treatment will add weight to the driver. Now in the back we have the phase change for 0 and 180 degrees. Now I'm not going to go in depth into the phase discussion because that's a whole another topic. But simply most of the time this should be set at 0 but when you change it to 180 degrees it reverses the polarity of the subwoofer, which means your subwoofer is moving inward while your main drivers are moving outward. And sometimes this can result in a better in-room low frequency response if you have the subwoofer placed on a wall opposite from the wall from your main speakers. Then you have the crossover adjustment from 30 to 120 hertz. 
LFE input for those that want to use this with AVR and the dial to adjust the levels for that input. Then you have a level adjustment for these two inputs, the low level input and the high level input. The low level input is if you have a preamp or integrated amplifier with a dedicated preout. Now this is the high level input, which is what I think makes RHEL subwoofers unique and special. You use this cable that comes with the subwoofer and you plug in this end to the subwoofer and then the speaker cable and it goes to your main amplifier. And I won't go in detail on how to connect which color cable to which binding post on your amplifier because there are many ways to do it depending on the type of your amplifier. Instead, I will link in the description below to videos RHEL made themselves explaining each case scenario. You can also call RHEL if you have your subwoofers and want to ask them if your amplifier uh, needs a specific type of connection. Now, the high level input is beneficial in few different ways. The obvious one is that you don't need a dedicated preout on your preamplifier or integrated unit. Now, something that perhaps many of you heard that you already know is that RHEL subwoofer matched very well tonally and synergy of your system. And that's exactly what it does because you are connecting it to the same output as your speakers, you are essentially getting the same signal as the rest of your system, therefore the tonal and the synergy of that system is also put into your uh, subwoofers as well. And something not a lot of people may know and why some of the people may say, well, there's high level connections on some other subwoofers too, is that RHEL's high level connection is inherently superior due to the filters they use. Virtually all subwoofers have filters built in and this is to take out those unwanted high frequencies. The problem here is that these filters add a delay to the signal and that can range from anywhere like 30 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds. But with RHEL's filter, it is only eight milliseconds. So that's why it's so fast and that's why their high connection is the only uh, true high level connection as RHEL will put it. It uses 125 watts class AB amplification and according to RHEL, this is a high current amplification that is highly reliable, which is what you want for a musical subwoofer that will last you a long time. Now, let's get the obvious out of the way. This subwoofer is fast, dynamic, seamless, gets out of the way, and just becomes part of your system very easily. I can throw out like any word out there to describe really good bass, and that would be probably describing RHEL subwoofers. Incredibly easy to integrate. It took me almost no time to set these up with all those speakers that came in here for review, but that's not the end of it. A really good subwoofer can impact the entire nature of the system. And what I mean is that it is not about just filling, filling in the lower octave. The RHEL T5i does that and some more. This is what I mean. When I paired this, this subwoofer with the Focal A26 speakers, for example, that speaker has serious amount of detail but can get tad tiring at times for my ears, especially when not placed correctly. With the RHEL subwoofer, even though the fundamental high frequency hasn't changed, it sounded smoother. The mid-range that was on the leaner side of neutral now sounds a lot fuller and more gut to the vocals and instruments. So really, a lot of the weaknesses that the speaker had is now taken care of and let me tell you, that system sounded absolutely fantastic. With the RHEL T5i added, the weaknesses were taken away. Still had that incredible detail, but with the impact and the gut of something like even the Wilson audio speakers. It is surprisingly good match with even the MagnaPan speakers as well. And I say this all the time, but the only subwoofer I can wholeheartedly recommend as of now with any MagnaPan speaker is probably RHEL subwoofers because of the speed. Now I am really sensitive to speed and maybe some of you are not as sensitive, which is fine, but most subwoofers just don't match the correct speed of the magnet pants, at least for me. And that's just you know, from personal experience. I've tried many subwoofers, including dipole subwoofers and open baffle subwoofers, and I haven't tried servo controlled ones just yet. So maybe that's next, but with magnet pants and as of now, I feel that rails are the closest thing that can match the speed of the MagnaPan speakers. And again, it's the same deal in that case as well. It's not just about filling up the lower octave. MagnaPan speakers sound fuller, 
richer and more like a box design that can really thump and pressurize your room while still retaining that transparency and quickness that the magnet pens are known for. So the Relti 5i takes away the weaknesses of the magnet pens, which is that they don't pressurize or do dynamics like a speaker with a phys physical cabinet can. Now I have two here and I will most likely buy two rail subwoofers for my system. There are benefits to have two subwoofers instead of just one. There's an entire test on this matter of adding more subwoofers and I think they went up to like 50 subwoofers in a single room for that test that I read years ago. But the point being here is that there are many benefits to have two subwoofers instead of just one. The obvious two reason being that it's more output capability and more even frequency response. So a more smoother frequency response. And I got one of the Rel T5i subwoofers in here first and then the second one came like a month later. So I was definitely able to tell that the two was quite better than just one. So like I said, even if you have never had a subwoofer or feel like you don't need a subwoofer, you don't know till you try it. I have yet to see an audio file go back to their non-subwoofer system after listening to their system with the rel subwoofers. And rel does offer, like I said, 60 day home trial and free return. And you get free shipping and three years of warranty. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching guys. Please do click the like button if you enjoyed the video. It does help us out. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Thanks guys. I'll see you guys on the next one.